Welcome to Grand Sumo Breakdown, the unofficial sumo podcast for official sumo fans. Welcome to Grand Sumo Breakdown. This is Ryan. This is Jake. And this is our Bonds K prediction for the upcoming Hatsu Basho. Uh, the deadline has passed for Guess the Bonds K, so we are free to release it, is what I would have been saying if we had recorded this on like Monday or Tuesday. Uh, but it is, we're sitting here. It's Thursday. It's the holidays. We've got a lot of other year end stuff that we're working on. Jake just wrapped up the uh, amateur sumo award show for the year. Uh, so we're getting to this while we can, which which means my daughter is currently upstairs in her room, not sleeping, but on her rest. And I am home alone, which means at any moment she could yell lightning round. And (laughs) yeah, and I've got to go help her out. So we're going to we're going to try to get this done. We're going to try to fit this in there. For the record, it's Thursday, the 21st. What uh, what's the deadline for submission on Bond's case? Uh, The deadline was Monday, the 18th. Got it. Cool. All right. Just making sure I can immediately turn around, edit, and release today. Yes, absolutely, Excellent. you can. So, with all that being said, let's absolutely get to it. Unless you had anything else of importance that you needed to mention, Jake. Nah. All right, let's do it. <laughs> Starting at the top, of course, at Yokozuna, still all by himself alone, will be Yokozuna, Teru no Fuji on the east side. No Ozeki's jumping up to the west side to claim a Yokozuna rank. Maybe after the Hatsu Basho, we will have a second Yokozuna to throw in there. Or more likely, we'll throw like Kirishima up there, then Teru no Fuji will retire. <laughs> so we'll still only have one. Um, at Ozeki, we just have the typical Ozeki shuffle, as they always do, based on who had the most wins in the previous Basho. So 13 is greater than 10, is greater than 9, which means it'll be Kirishima at Ozeki East, Hoshoryu at Ozeki 1 West, and Takakesho dropping to Ozeki 2 West. Obviously, Takakesho is on the West side to balance out Terunofuji on the East side so that we have an even number of Sanyaku Rikshi on both sides of the Bonske. Hey, it looks Drop- like the copy paste didn't work we got him backwards oh shoot yep oh well hopefully that is the only mistake that is in there we will find out as we go (laughs) Uh, (laughs) let's just start over again no absolutely not we don't have the time (laughs) at seki uh we've we've got something to talk about at seki for the first time in a few months uh first starting with wakamoto haru having a losing record and both Komosubi having a losing record, which means we're going to drop Wakamoto Haru from the Sekiwake ranks. And as both Komosubi had losing records, neither one of them are going to be eligible to force open a third Sekiwake rank. So we should have only two Sekiwake for the first time since July of 2022. We've oh my been riding with three or more <laughs> Sekiwake for about a year and a half. And back then it was Wakataka Kage and Daesho as the two sole Sekiwake in mm. that Basho. So second of all, we need to figure out if we should be switching the order of Kotonowaka and Daesho since Kotonowaka had 11 wins from Sekiwake 2, while Daesho had nine wins from the top Sekiwake East spot. But I don't think this is going to happen for a couple of reasons. The first being that Wakamoto Haru was ranked ahead of Kotonowaka in the previous Basho, which means that Kotonowaka will be moved up from at least Sekiwake 2 to Sekiwake 1, uh, no matter what happens. So he's already going to get some form of promotion. The second reason is that we've actually seen a very similar uh, situation recently in Kyushu of 2022. Hoshoryu went eight and seven from Sekiwake East um, and Oh, sorry. Hoshoryu went 11 and four from Sekiwake West. Wakataka Kage went eight and seven from Sekiwake East. Very similar to what we have here. Kosunawaka with 11, Daisho with 9. In that case, uh, they did not switch places. It, it seemed like it was fairly common in the early 2000s for Sekiwake to switch ranks based on their record, much like Arozeki do all the time. Sure. But that really isn't happening as much anymore. Uh, mostly when the switch does happen, it's happened in cases when the Sekiwake West won the U show, like Mitaki Yumi, when he won his first U show and jumped ahead of an eight and seven Ichinojo, who is Sekiwake East, while Mitaki Yumi was Sekiwake West. But 
that's not always the case because we've also seen the Yusha winning Sekiwake West not get promoted past the Sekiwake East. Uh, when Tamawashi won his first Yusho, he went 13 2 from Sek- Sekiwake West, but the Sekiwake East was Takakesho, who went 11 4 and won the June Yusho. And this was also in the middle of Takakesho Sozeki run, so they didn't demote Takakesho over to the West side. So it's not a lock if one wins the Yusho that they jump over the other, but obviously, no Yusho involved between these two and based on how they handled Hoshoryu and Wakataka Kage just last year. I don't think there's any reason Kota no Waka should jump ahead of Daisho. So at Sekiwake East, I have Daisho. And at Sekiwake West, I have Kota no Waka. And then in the Sekiwake uh, two spot, it's going to be blank. There's nobody there. We're going to have two Sekiwake this Basho, I believe. Uh, mostly, le- if you're watching on YouTube, obviously we have our... Uh, the Kyushu results bonds K with every Rikshi's rank and their record. And then also we're slowly revealing as we go through my Hatsu prediction. Uh, I left in that second Sekiwake rank on there just for the visual ease of everything lining up from. I know you one- better than to think that you would mess with the aesthetics of it. Yeah, it, it would be hard to follow if like Tomosubi <laughs> was like one line lower than the other one. It's just easy. It's straight across. It's nice and easy. <laughs> <laughs> Sekiwake 2 will be on the bonds K with nobody there. Got it. Sekiwake 2 will not be on the Bonds K. <laughs> Speaking of things you can notice if you're watching this on YouTube, let's Ooh. see those hands again, Ryan. Oh, yes, absolutely. <laughs> Very beautiful. <laughs> Do tell. Uh, my daughter wanted to paint her fingernails last night. My wife suggested we do Christmas colors. And as always, whenever my daughter busts out the makeup or the fingernail polish after she's done, hey, daddy, want your fingernails uh, painted? And because I'm a good father, it's every single time. Absolutely. Of course, I want my fingernails painted. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I'm rocking. I'm rocking the red and green fingernail polish. And I don't I'm not ashamed. You don't or have to be, I be, but I'm not yeah. going to not mention it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, dropping down to the Komosubi rank. As I mentioned before, there were no Komosubi with winning records, which means for the second straight Basho, we're going to have a new pair of Komosubi to start the new year. Uh, And it is fairly straightforward, really, as to who it should be. Takayasu had 10 wins for Maegashira 3. Ura had 8 wins for Maegashira 1. They are the only two Rikshi with records that deserve to be put in the Sanyaku ranks. So let's do that. Takayasu, giving the given the better record, should end up at Komosubi East and Ura at Komosubi West. Then we drop down to Maegashira 1, and this is where, as always, things tend to start to get complicated. So really, there is only one Rikshi whose previous rank and record makes him deserving of the Maegashira 1 rank, and that is Atami Fuji, who went 11-4 and from Maegashira 8. But I don't think it is a slam dunk that he takes this top Magashira spot because we also have to consider Wakamoto Haru here. Uh, he deserves to be the Magashira Maiga- 2 rank after his 6-9 and nine record from Sekiwake, but we know that he could have some Sanyaku bias on his side to end up ahead of Atami Fuji, especially as Atami Fuji was outside of the joy ranked at Magashira 8. So... How I'm basing my decision is based on something similar that happened in the last Basho. Uh, last Basho, we had Takayasu, who deserved to, he went 10 and 5 from Maegashira 7 in the last Basho. Uh, and he deserved to be one rank ahead of Tobizaru, who is dropping from the Komosubi rank after going 6 and 9. Um, and so how they end, ended up on the Bonske was Takayasu outside of the joy, had double-digit wins, ended up ahead of the dropping Sanyaku Rikshi that deserved to be one rank below um, Takayasu there. So this is a very similar situation here. Tommy Fuji deserves to be one rank ahead of the dropping Sanyaku Rikshi, but he's coming from outside of the joy. We saw that it didn't matter with Takayasu last time. I'm going to hope that it doesn't matter with a Tommy Fuji uh, this time. So I'm going to have a Tommy Fuji landing at my Gashira one East. So that does mean I'm also ignoring uh, Nishkigi from the last Basho, who flies in the face of the logic that I used in the Takeyasu and Toby Saru <laughs> case, because Nishkigi was also dropping from the Komosubi rank last Basho. He had a 5-10 and 10 record, uh, but he ended up ranked ahead of Onosho, who deserved to be two ranks 
ahead of Nishkigi. Uh, so yay, consistency. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I love how even on any specific Bonske, any individual Bonske, you can find counterexamples to almost everything you want to do. <laughs> which which I think makes this Bonske up to about Maegashira 9 very complicated. Uh, this, this kind of scenario is what... Who figures out these tiebreakers is going to be the person that wins Guess the Bonds K because there really aren't any sections where we're going to be desperately trying to fill a rank with a Rikshi. And it's just like, oh, which one of these bad choices is the best choice to fill in here? Like everybody kind of deserves to go where they're going to end up. It's just that who is going to be able to figure out uh, these tie breaking scenarios between a dropping joy Rikshi and a rising Rikshi or dropping Sanyaku Rikshi and a joy Rikshi stuff like that. Uh, So I don't think that I'm going to have any egregious misses on this bonds K like we've seen in the past missing somebody, but like two or three full ranks. I don't think it's going to be one of those, but I do think this could be a prediction with a lot of small misses uh, because we're going to have a lot of tiebreakers with kind of undefined. And as we just highlighted inconsistent rules to determine who goes ahead of who. Uh, So this bonds K could end up like, death by a thousand paper cuts uh, for me, depending on how the Bonske committee wants to go. Sure. So if Atami Fuji ends up at Maegashira 1 East, then we are going to be left with two Rikshi competing for Maegashira 1 West, uh, both of whom deserve to be ranked Maegashira 2, Wakamoto Haru and Midori Fuji. For me, this is a case where I do think Sanyaku bias will come into play. Both Rikshi were previously on the West side, and since Midori Fuji was outside of the joy, and they both deserve to be the same rank. I think Wakamoto Haru will win this tiebreaker to take the Magashira one West rank. Gotcha. All right. And so far, everything on YouTube is still lining up as it's supposed to be. So I think hopefully that <laughs> Ozeki was the only mishap there. You're going to be in your own head about this the entire episode, aren't you? I'm I'm double checking every time you reveal one. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Uh, so now we get to Magashira 2, and Midori Fuji is now the only Rikshi that deserves to be ranked Magashira 2. But once again, hold on there, because we have a dropping Sanyaku Rikshi to consider. Abi, with his 6-9 and nine record from Komozubi, deserves to be only one rank below Midori Fuji, which is the perfect range for Sanyaku bias to strike. But I, I'm going to stick with the logic that I use for Atami Fuji. The Bonds K committee might not be consistent, but I like to be uh, consistent. Uh <laughs> At least Screw the them, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure I'm going to have something that is exact opposite logic later on down the line. Um, but I'm going to stick with that logic. I'm going to go with Midori Fuji here at Maegashira 2 East. Abi might have the Sanyaku bias on his side, but Midori Fuji does deserve to be ranked ahead of him. And I feel like that's the trend that we've been seeing recently from the Bonske committee is if the guy outside of the joy deserves to be ahead of that Sanyaku Rikshi, for the most part, Nishkiki last Basho excluded, they end up ahead of that tropic Sanyaku Rikshi. Sure. So then we get to Maegashira 2 West, and we have the exact same conversation that we had with Wakamoto Haru at Maegashira 1 West, because now we have two Rikshi that deserve to be ranked Maegashira 3 and are vying for the Maegashira 2 rank. Abi, as we just mentioned, dropping from Komosubi, and Gonoyama, who went 8 and 7 from Maegashira 4. And similar to Wakamoto Haru taking the Maegashira 1 West rank, I'm going to have Abi take the Maegashira 2 West rank, since I just don't believe that they're going to have a Rikshi dropping out of the Sanyaku lose the tiebreaker to a non-Joy Rikshi that deserves to be the same rank as him. So for me, I've got Abi Maegashira 2 West. And both of the Maegashira 1, Maegashira 2, I think I've got the right Rikshi there. Would not be shocked if they were flip-flopped either way. Um, I'd be surprised if, like, Abi ended up at Maegashira 1 and Wakamoto Haru at Maegashira 2. That makes zero sense. So I think I've got the right Rikshi there, but East-West, it's a toss-up. Who knows? Gotcha. Then, and it's going to be like that basically until Maegashira 9. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're going to keep talking about a tiebreaker and then move yes. on to the next one. And it's like, is it the guy that lost that last tiebreaker? Maybe. Pretty much, on. yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. So Maegashira 3 East. I've got I've actually got Gonoyama landing here pretty easily after his eight and seven record for Maegashira four. He is the only other Rikshi that deserves to be ranked Maegashira three. Um, 
And I think Hokuto Fuji, he deserves Mike Ashira five. Yeah. So he he is clear from any dropping Sanyaku Rikshi, uh Gonoyama is. So then Mike Ashira three West, once again, having the conversation. Does the Rikshi that deserve to be one rank ahead of the dropping Sanyaku Rikshi actually get ranked ahead of the dropping Sanyaku Rikshi? So this time we have Toby Zaru, who deserves to be ranked Maigashira 4 after his 7 and 8 record from this very same Maigashira 3 West rank, uh, versus Hokuto Fuji, who deserves to be Maigashira 5 after his 5 and 10 record from Komosubi. And so here, here's. I just promised I'm going to be consistent. Here I am going to be inconsistent. I am going to go with Sanyaku bias and have Hokuto Fuji land at Maigashira 3 West, mostly because uh, Toby Zaru was Maigashira 3 West in the previous Basho. Um, and so I think they will go with Hokuto Fuji just so that they can bump down Toby Zaru here uh, to give him uh, a slight demotion after his losing record, as opposed to keeping him in front of Hokuto Fuji and keeping his previous rank. Once sure. again, that could easily be flip flop, but that that's how I want to do it. The, uh, this episode should be your audition tape to get on the bonds K committee because <laughs> you're like, I'm going to be consistent here. And they're like, Ooh, nice. And here I'm not going to be. And they're like, Ooh, this guy's got the stuff. He's got the secret sauce. <laughs> He's got a trophy and everything. Yeah. Right there. Best bonds. K guy. That one. Yeah. That, yeah, that one. <laughs> <laughs> so luckily, after Maigashira 3 West, we are done with the dropping Sanyaku Rikshi, but that just means we're going into the hell of dropping Joy Rikshi and figuring out what sort of bias they're going to receive. If any. Yeah. <laughs> so Maigashira 4 on the east side. Toby Zaru is the only Rikshi that deserves to be Maigashira 4, so I have him taking the Maigashira 4 east rank. Then for Maigashira 4 West, we have three Rikshi that deserve to be ranked Maigashira 5 competing for the Maigashira 4 West rank. We have Shodai, who went 6 and 9 for Maigashira 2 East, Nishkigi, who went 7 and 8 for Maigashira 4 West, and Ryuden, who went 10 and 5 for Maigashira 10 East. If we were to follow standard tie-breaking procedures and completely ignore Joy Bias, Ryuden would take this spot. But Joy Bias does exist, which is why I'm going to put Shodai at Maigashira 4 West instead. They're all tied for deserving the same rank. Shodai should get some Joy Bias, which allow him to jump ahead of the other two Rikshi. And then we get to Maigashira 5. So... We are left to decide between the order of Ryuden and Nishkigi. These are the only Rikshi that deserve to be ranked Maigashira 5. Uh, the next one uh, deserves to be Maigashira 6, but they are outside of the joy. No reason that Rikshi would jump over either of them. So it's just uh, Ryuden and Nishkigi to figure out here. So Nishkigi is kind of weird to consider if he should receive joy bias or not. Since Ter Terano Fuji was absent, uh, Nishkigi was 17th in the overall order of uh, Rikshi on this Bonske, but with Terano Fuji absent, he became part of the top 16, which kind of made him semi in the joy. And he fought against six Sanyaku Rikshi, but none of his other nine matchups was against a Rikshi ranked higher than Maigashira 5. So he didn't fight any of the Maigashira 1 through 4 in this sure. Basho, which is kind of weird, fighting 6 Sanyaku, but none of the Maigashira like 1 through 4. That so he weird. didn't fight a full Joy schedule, so I'm really having trouble deciding if uh, we should ignore the East-West tiebreaker as Ryuden was previously on the East side and Nishikigi was on the West side. So if we ignore Joy bias completely, Ryuden should go ahead of Nishikigi here. I'm really I was really stuck on this one. Honestly, I could go either way. So I'm just going to go with the East West tiebreaker and have Ryuden land at Maigashira five East and Nishkigi drop to Maigashira five West. I don't really have a good reason for that. It's just basically I'm using the East West tiebreaker. I think facing six Sanyaku Rikshi could easily get Nishkigi a little bit of bias, but this is how I'm going to do it. Fair enough. So then Maigashira six. Key Bozon seems like the clear and obvious choice to go next. He is the only Rikshi that deserves to be ranked Maigashira 6 after his 8-7 and seven record from Maigashira 7. The two Rikshi that deserve to be ranked Maigashira 7 were both outside of the joy, so no extra tiebreaker should need to be considered here. But we do have Asanoyama, 
who does deserve to be ranked my Gashira eight. And I think he could be considered here. We have seen plenty of times in the past where joy bias could be enough to overcome two ranks. Nishkigi last Basho at literally as I was writing this outline on my prediction, I switched these two places literally five, six times, maybe more as I'm just going back and forth. <laughs> well, no joy bias, get us Nami ahead. No, 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 no. Keen boson. He should be ahead. And I, Literally have no idea. So I this this Basho I'm kind of going with. I'm going to give a little bit more joy bias um, than I might have in the past couple of Basho. So I, I'm going to have Asanoyama land at Maegashira 6 East after his 4 and 11 record for Maegashira 1 to land right at that spot, which means I have Keen Boson at Maegashira 6 West, rising one rank after his 8 and 7 record from Maegashira 7. That one, that one's the biggest coin flip for me. I, I, I'm I not really concerned with Asanoyama jumping ahead of the two Rikshi that deserve to be Maegashira 7. I think... I think he clears that hurdle pretty easily in my mind. So for me, it's just a matter of does he get bumped ahead of Keen Boson or not? But this could be a situation. He deserves to be my Gashir 8. So maybe I miss Asanoyama by two ranks on this spot because there are other Rikshi that deserve these ranks that could go ahead of him. It's going to be really interesting how this all plays out. Sure. Uh, then we get to the Maegashira 7 rank, and this this kind of ends up to be my biggest puzzle on this Bonds K, and it centers around what do I do with Mese. So Mese went 4 and 11 from Maegashira 2. He's our final Joy Rikshi that is dropping down the Bonds K, and we have to f- figuring out where he's going to land caused me quite a headache because I think he should go ahead of some of these Rikshi he deserves to be behind because He's going to get some joy bias uh, in my head, but where to stick him in so he's not causing too many other problems by putting him ahead of these guys is a little confusion, confusing. So he deserves to be ranked Maegashira 9. Uh, we've got two non-joy Rikshi that deserve to be Maegashira 7, Shonan Umi, Ichi Yamamoto. And then there are three non-joy Rikshi that deserve to be Maegashira 8, Hokuseiho, Mitaki Yumi, and Hira do Umi. So my my first scenario, because I, I think he could jump any of them, those all being out of the joy, all five of them being out of the joy, he can jump over them. I'm still haunted by them giving Nishiki Fuji ranking him ahead of a Rikshi. He deserved to be three ranks behind uh, back in like yeah. May or July of this year. So this is why Mace is really throwing me off is because he very easily could land ahead of any or all of these Rikshi. So I just started placing him and seeing what that would do down the line. So if we put Mace at my Gashir seven East ahead of all five of these other Rikshi um, in that scenario, Shonan Naumi would land at Maegashira 7 West. He has the tiebreaker over Ichi Yamamoto. They're tied for deserving the Maegashira 7 rank. And then that would put Ichi Yamamoto at Maegashira 8 East. And then Hokuseiho, he wins the tiebreaker uh, between the three Rikshi that deserve to be ranked Maegashira 9. Because uh, I believe he was the only one on the East side. Yeah, that's why he wins that. Um, so then we'd put Hokuseiho at Maegashira uh, 8 West, right? Is that what I said? Yeah, yeah, because Ichi Yamamoto would be Maegashira 8 East, Hokuseo Maegashira 8 West. But I don't I don't like how that order plays out, because what it does, it over-demotes Shonan Naumi and Hokuseho by an extra half rank after they both had seven and eight records. Drop them by a rank and a half, which might not be a big deal. It might be a big deal. Um, because Shonan Naumi was at Maegashira 6 East, dropping him to Maegashira 7 West, and Hokuseiho would be dropping Maegashira 7 East to Maegashira 8 West. I I don't like doing the over demotions, even a half rank over demotion, especially uh, in favor of a Rikshi that deserves to be ranked behind them, even if it is a Joy Rikshi. Uh, so for that reason, I'm not putting Meisei at Maegashira 7 East because I want to avoid those over demotions. So sure. what if I put Meisei at Maegashira 7 West? Then I've got Shonan Naumi, Maegashira 7 East. We're avoiding his over demotion. Then if I'm avoiding over demotions, I've got to put Hokuseiho at Maegashira 8 East. But then that puts Ichi Yamamoto at Maegashira 8 West. And I, I don't like this scenario either because by avoiding the over demotion for Hokuseiho, which I've already said I don't, I'm not going to do in my prediction, I have to put Ichi Yamamoto behind him. 
but Ichi Yamamoto deserves to be ranked ahead of Hokuseiho. So with both of these, be- Richie being outside of the joy, I don't think the Bazke committee would want to put Hokuseiho randomly ahead of a Richie he deserves to be behind. Uh, so that situation doesn't work for me either. So obviously I'm not putting Meisei at Magashir 8 East, because then in that scenario, I would have Shonana Umi at 7 East, uh, Ichi Yamamoto at 7 West. Um, and uh, if I put Meisei at Magashir 8 East, then we're still over demoting Hokuseiho. So if I put him at Magashir 8 West, then I think things work out a little bit better. So that's that's kind of where I've put Meisei. So that gives us Shona Naumi, Magashir 7 East, uh, avoids an over demotion for him. Ichi Yamamoto, Magashir 7 West, keeps him ahead of Hokuseiho and jumps him up from Magashir 14 after his 11 of 4 record. And then that lands Hokuseiho at Magashira 8 East to avoid any over demotion for him and keeps him behind the Rikshi that he deserves to be behind. And so Putting him at my putting Mesa at my Gashira eight West, it it avoids muddling up with the Rikshi ahead of him, but it still has him jumping over a couple of Rikshi he otherwise deserves to be behind. So this does fill up the my Gashira eight rank that Mitaki Yumi and Hira Daomi both deserve to be at, but. Both of them had winning records, so we would not be over demoting them by filling this spot with Meisei, uh, without including them here. They'll just get under promotions, and we're always much better with under demotions than over de- under promotions than under demotions. So from this point on, things get quite a bit smoother. We're past all of the joy Rikshi from here. Uh, so at Maigashira nine. Mitaki Yumi and Hira to Umi are the only two Rikshi we need to consider for the Magashira 9 rank. They were both on the west side, so there's no tiebreaker there. And Hira to Umi had nine wins to Mitaki Yumi's eight. So Hira to Umi should win that tiebreaker to go ahead of Mitaki Yumi. But if we did that, Mitaki Yumi would get no promotion at all because he was eight and seven from Magashira 9 west. I'm not going to do that. So I'm going to have Mitaki Yumi rise a half rank from Maigashira 9 West to Maigashira 9 East. And I have Hira de Umi rising two ranks from Maigashira 11 West to Maigashira 9 West. Uh, Jake, I've got to take a pause here. My daughter is yelling. <laughs> Sounds good. See you in a minute. All right. I will note that I could have avoided the issue of Mitaki Yumi going ahead of Hira de Umi. When he doesn't deserve to, uh, by putting Hira Umi at Maigashira 8 West instead of Meisei, then we'd have Mitaki Yumi have to go at Maigashira 9 East uh, because we don't want him to get no promotion at all. And then that would put My- Meisei at Maigashira 9 West. So this would make sure that all tiebreakers are followed according to the letter of the law. Uh, but since Mi- Mitaki Yumi and Hira Umi deserve to be the same numerical rank, I'm not overly concerned about that tiebreaker. Uh, not being followed exactly to allow Mitaki Yumi to get a half rank uh, promotion and then putting Hira to Umi behind him. So I, I'm a little concerned that maybe that little bit of muddling could put Meisei back at Maigashira 9 West, but I, I'm I'm not overly concerned about it. But sure. yeah, Me- Meisei is the guy who I have the most, I think has the most variability on this Bonske. And, but, and you got to put him somewhere. So like a, yeah. when it comes down to it, you kind of have to just pick and then make everything work around it, right? Yeah, the safe spot where everything works perfectly kind of is Maigashira 9 West. But we know that that isn't, I feel like that's not how it's going to happen. I feel like he's going to get some sort of bias. Sure. In his favor. All right, but as I mentioned, Done with dropping Sanyaku Rikshi. Done with dropping Joy Rikshi. Everything else is a lot more smooth sailing. The tiebreakers have defined rules from here on out for the most part. So we get to the Maiga Shira 10 East rank. Um, and every every remaining rank available has a maximum of two Rikshi that deserve that rank. Uh, so it's not like we're going to be pulling anybody up who doesn't deserve to be here or pushing anybody or pushing somebody down like not a whole lot at all uh, to fill these spots. So Tamawashi actually deserved to be ranked my Gashir nine, but obviously too many people ahead of him for him to go there. Uh, and with him being the only non Jurio Rikshi that deserves to be 
my Gashira nine because Koto Shoho by the numbers also deserves my Gashira nine from Jurio. Um, I'll easily slot him into the Magashira 10 rank, rising two ranks after a nine and six record for Magashira 12. We're also not worried about, uh, since he's being under promoted, we're not worried about over demotions here at all with him since he deserved the Magashira nine rank and he's not quite getting there. So then for Magashira 10 West, we now have two Rikshi that deserve the rank of Magashira 10, fighting to see who will not be under promoted. And that fight is between Sada no Umi and Tsuru Gisho. And it's actually a pretty easy battle. Sada no Umi was on the east side. Tsuru Gisho was on the west side. So Sada no Umi should rise one rank to Magashira 10 West after an eight and seven record. Um, it, I'm trying to check yeah it's also Sada Nanumi had to go there to get any promotion at all because he was ranked Magashira 11 right East. if we yeah. didn't put him on the west side there he'd be frozen and that's not going to happen in but, the past we like most bonds case have at least one guy that went seven and eight where it's like fine we won't demote you but yeah. have we ever seen any eight and sevens not get promoted in our era here we have it happened once with Yutakayama but it was mm-hmm. in a basho where the number of Sanyaku Rikshi from one basho to the next dropped by three. So like his actual <laughs> order up the Bonske, like if he was number 33 in the first Bonske and then had his rank frozen, but three Rikshi dropped from the Sanyaku ranks, then he would be number 30 on the next one. Uh, so his numerical rank didn't increase, but he did see kind of an effective increase in his rank in that scenario i gotcha so yeah i I guess what i'm saying though is the bar is very high to not promote somebody with a winning record so yeah Yeah. here sadanomi versus surgi show not a big enough outlier for that to be the case so sadanomi's got to move up somehow and and sadanomi has the tiebreaker over sudagi show anyways um the the real test for that is more mitaki yumi versus hira do umi if mese does go ahead of them uh because hira do umi wins the tiebreaker over mitaki yumi but i have mitaki yumi going ahead in spite of that Right, because he's got to move up at least a half slot. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. And we are dropping one number from the Sanyaku. So feasibly, if Mitaki Yumi stayed at Magashira 9 West, which I think might be the exact spot Yutakiyama was at, is either Magashira 9 or Magashira 8 uh, when he maintained his same. Of course you remember. (laughs) Of course I do. It's it's enough of an outlier thing that I kind of remember. Okay, fair. But Um, yes, when when the number in Sanyaku changes, things can get a little bit fishy. But yeah, I... And I don't think it's going to get fishy after a change of one. Right. All right. So Maigashira 11. That means Sudagi show. He lost that tiebreaker to Sada no Umi. He deserved to be ranked Maigashira 10. There's no other Rikshi that deserved to be ranked ahead of him or the same rank as him. So Sudagi show should easily slot into the Maigashira 11 East rank. Uh, and that's after his nine and six record from Maigashira 13. Then. We have a battle between two Rikshi that deserve to be Maigashira 11 fighting for the last Maigashira 11 spot. That is Oho and Takanosho. So this one is a little bit trickier kind of on the surface because Oho was on the east side and Takanosho was on the west side. So it should easily go to Oho. But if we put Oho here, then Takanosho would get over demoted. He would be demoted six ranks after his five and ten record from Maigashira six. But which is something obviously I've talked about on this bonds guy. I try to avoid over demotions if at all possible, but ultimately I am okay with Takanosho being over demoted here since no one is being put ahead of him. That doesn't deserve it, but mostly just like we talked about with Sada no Umi, if we don't put Oho here, then Oho wouldn't get any promotion after his eight and seven record. So that is why I have Oho landing at my Gashira 11 West. Makes sense so, to me. That being said, Takanosho should land at Magashira 12 East after his 5 and 10 record for Magashira 6, getting a little bit of an over demotion. But we know just from the last Basho, uh, Ryuden, uh, he got over demoted uh, by one rank. He dropped four ranks after a 6 and 9 record, uh, which should have dropped him only three ranks. So we know it'll happen if need be. And so once again, at Magashira 12 West, we have a battle between two Rikshi that deserve to be at Magashira 12, but only one of them can make it. This time, the battle is between two of the absolute hottest commodities on our popularity poll. Check that episode out if you haven't already. Miyogiryu and Chura no Umi. Uh, <laughs> since Miyogiryu was on the east side while Chura no Umi was on the west side, he should land at Magashira 12 west after his 6-9 and nine record from Magashira 9. 
<laughs> I thought you were serious for a second, and I'm like, who's still down here that was all that popular? Because there's not a lot, but... <laughs> Who uh, is down here that was kind of high on the list? I think Tomokaze mm, got nobody. a vote or few. Tomokaze no. got like two votes total. So I was correct. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Oh, um, well, Koto Eko's probably gone uh, from the top division. I mean, we'll get there, but like, I know yeah. Koto Eko got a vote or two and he's not shown up yet. Endo got a vote or two. But yeah, yeah, it's uh, most most of the real popular guys are popular because they're interesting they're and good. successful. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. You kind of have to have both. Yep. All right. Moving Anyways. down to. Yeah, moving down to Magashira 13. Uh, we've got Chuda Naumi. Uh, I've got him going there since he lost the tiebreaker for the previous rank. So uh, rising up two ranks after his nine and six Maku Uchi debut for Magashira 15. And with that, with placing Chuda Naumi, we have now placed all Maku Uchi Rikshi with a winning record, which means we can now open the floodgates for Jurio Rikshi if we so please. Uh, the only one that we really have to consider at this point is Koto Shoho, who went 12 and 3 from Juria 1. And as I mentioned before, would otherwise deserve to be ranked Maigashira 9 if Juria Rikshi got the benefit of uh, equal treatment, which, pff, no. Of course um, not. But no, please, <laughs> I am not going to be putting Koto Shoho on the Bonds K quite yet, even though he's facing off against a Rikshi that deserves to be four ranks below him, uh, because Endo deserves to fill the final Magashira 13 rank and he went 5 and 10 for Magashira 8. If he did not go here, then would be over demoting Endo in favor of Ajurio Rikshi, which is something that we have seen throughout the past year. The Bonske committee is not interested in doing any of that. So I've got Endo landing at Magashira 13 East. Yeah, can't be too nice to those Jurio guys. No. Sorry, my, my daughter is being very active right now she has stripped her entire bed and is now jumping on it but she is she's contained doing that so we're still good for a little bit tell her that we're already at my gashira 14 she'll settle down <laughs> sure sure she'll totally understand <laughs> <laughs> uh but since we are at my gashira 14 let's let's speed through this before she no longer is content <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so we're, we're past the most interesting parts for sure <laughs> yeah uh so my gashira 14 east i'm not quite putting koto shoho on the bonds cake here either because we have oh no show he deserves to be the Magashira 14 rank after his 3 and 12 record from Magashira 6 and for me I just don't think the Bonds K committee is going to over demote oh no show even if by a half rank um, especially since he was so high up the Bonds K previously he was ranked Magashira 5 um, so I just don't think that they're going to over demote him by a half rank once again in favor of a Jurio Rikshi uh, in Koto Shoho. So I've got Ono oh Show landing at Magashira 14 East. Although, like I said, Koto Shoho at Magashira 14 East would not surprise me. Uh, and here is a shock. Come here, Riley. Well, look at that. <laughs> Riley apparently figured out how to open her door. Can you say hi, Riley? Oh, hi, Riley. Can you wave to Uncle Jake? Do you see Uncle Jake in the picture there? Did you Did have you a have good rest? Door? All right, should Did we, we figure out the, the doorknob? For you? <laughs> should we go turn on some TV for you? All right, quick pause. We'll be back with my Gashira. Uh, I guess officially still we're on 14, aren't we? <laughs> yeah. All right, I'm back. Put skewers through asparagus when you're grilling them. Then they all stay flat and organized, and you Ooh. can just flip the whole thing as like a pancake of asparagus. That's a good idea. Oh, that's brilliant. <laughs> all right. My guess you're a 14 West. Yes. So, yeah, uh, obviously, uh, just sorry about the interruptions. We've, we've, we're we've we watching Bluey, so we should be good for, for five minute increments. Yeah. Yeah. She, she found her <laughs> unwrapped Christmas present of the DVDs of the first two seasons of Bluey. So we're watching those. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> All right. So I think we landed uh, my Gashira 14 East. We're putting Ono Show there ahead of Koto Shoho. Wouldn't surprise me if Koto Shoho does go ahead of Ono Show here, but this is how I'm seeing it play out. Uh, but that is the final hurdle. Absolutely nothing else would stand in the way of Koto Shoho making his return to the top division and landing at my Gashira 14 West. 
Then we get to my Gashira 15. And the next Rikshi that deserved to be ranked is Jurio Phenom Ono Sato, who went 12 and 3 from Jurio 5 and deserves the my Gashira 13 rank. Uh, he is two ranks clear of the next Makauchi Rikshi who deserves to be placed. So I have him making his uh, Makauchi debut at my Gashira 15 East. The next Rikshi that deserves to be placed is another Jurio Rikshi in Bushozan. Uh, he went 10 and 5 from Jurio 2. He deserves to be Maigashira 14. However, there is one Makauchi Rikshi that deserves the Maigashira 15 rank, and that is Tomokaze. He went 7 and 8 from Maigashira 14 East. And if we put Bushozan ahead of Tomokaze, then Tomokaze would be over demoted by a half rank in favor of a Jurio Rikshi. As we all know, I don't like to do that. So I have Tomokaze landing at my Gashira 15 West instead. And I know that I over demoted uh, Tomokaze by a half rank in order for Ono Sato to go ahead of him, uh, which I wanted to avoid with Ono Show. Uh, but my theory is that Onosho being ranked my Gashira 5, uh, he'll be given some additional bias to prevent a half rank over demotion that a my Gashira 14 might not receive. Hmm. Uh, plus, in Nagoya of this year, Chio Shoma went 6 and 9 for my Gashira 12 East and ended up at my Gashira 15 West, an over demotion of a half rank in favor of then Jurio Rikshi Atami Fuji. So there is recent precedence for it happening to a low ranked my Gashira. So I think before when I was talking about Tomokaze, I, forget, I thought for some reason we were talking about the East side of the rank for Tomokaze. No, he's landing on the West side. And if we put uh Bushos on ahead of Tomokaze, then Tomokaze would be demoted by a full numerical rank in favor of a Jurio Rikshi. And that's absolutely not happening. So yeah, Tomokaze, my Gashira 15, no problem. Maybe ending up at my Gashira 15 East. If we want to avoid an over demotion for him, like I did with Onosho. But as I said, I think Onosho being so far up the bonds K that he might get a little bit of bias that Tomokaze otherwise wouldn't. Sure. My Gashir, yeah. My Gashir 16. Now, this is where uh, I've got Bushozan going. Uh, he deserves the My Gashira 14 rank. He's competing against a My Gashira that deserves the My Gashira 16 rank. Uh, since he deserves to be two ranks ahead of the Makauchi Rikshi, I've got Bushozan going ahead of him, taking that My Gashira 16 East rank. And then that leaves um, the Makauchi Rikshi, who deserves to be My Gashira 16. Uh, leaves it wide open for them to take the my Gashira 16 West spot. And that is Takada Fuji who went six and nine for my Gashira 13 East. So another similar situation. Uh, I have him being over demoted by a half rank in favor of a jury of Rikshi, just like I have going on to Tomokaze. What's it's another couple of situations where we'll see how the tiebreakers play out here. Um, hopefully they don't bite me in the butt too much. <laughs> And then our final rank, the Maigashira 17, which will have a West side again. We've been without the West side for a couple of Basho, but now that we've dropped a Rikshi from the Sanyaku, we got to add it on to the butt end of the Bonds K. So we've got a Maigashira 17 West this Basho. And honestly, it should be pretty damn straightforward. The next four Rikshi that deserve to be ranked are all Jurio Rikshi, uh, spanning from deserving to be ranked Maigashira 16 to deserving to be ranked Jurio 1. Two of them deserve to be at least two ranks ahead of the next Makauchi Rikshi, so we shouldn't have any problem putting two Jurio Rikshi here. And one of them deserves to be ranked Maigashira 16, the other one Maigashira 17. So no real struggle to figure it out. Maigashira 17 East, I've got Shimazu Umi making his Makauchi debut after a 9-6 and six record from Jurio 2. And rounding out the top division, I've got Aoyama taking the Maigashira 17 West rank after an 8-7 and seven record from Jurio 1. So as you can see on YouTube, we've got five Rikshi with that uh, lighter shade of green signifying that they are being promoted up from Jurio, which means we're going to have five Rikshi that were demoted down to Makauchi. So in my prediction, those are Kotoeko, Tohakuryu, Roga, Nishiki Fuji, and Kita Nowaka. Similar to the last Basho, it's not really in contention for who's going up, who's going down. It's all fairly sure. clear cut. I'm not worried about any of these guys coming up to the top division. Actually, no, last Basho, it wasn't clear cut because it was coin flip between Aoyama going down and Kita Nawaka coming up or not, um, which I nailed. Good job, me. Uh, but this time, no, there's no, <laughs> there's no confusion. It's very clear cut. Who's going down, who's coming up. 
very by the numbers for this one. Uh, so, Jake, going through all of this, what what do you think my biggest potential mishap would be on this Bonds K? Um, I don't think this is a surprise because it's the one that we spend the most time talking about. But mm-hmm. may say having like five different slots that each kind of make a little bit of sense. Yeah. Um, and I put them right in the middle. So if I do miss them, it's not going to be by too much. Yeah, exactly. Somebody dropping down with an awful record from near the top into uh, already a bit of a cesspool of tiebreakers and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. That's going to make that one tough. Um, I don't think it's one that you're going to miss by, like you said, you're not going to miss it by a lot. But I think it's probably the most interesting bit of the most interesting bit of knowledge to gain from the next Bonds K. Yeah. And and we. We've also got Oh No Show, uh, Magashira 5, who's dropping down a significant way. Like you said, a guy at the top dropping very far way down. And we've got Oh No Show eating that full nine rank demotion. He could possibly be a wild card for ending up a little bit higher than that, but I just don't see it happening because there's just no room to put him in. Like a lot sure. of these guys in the past where we're having to pull people up the Bonds K, it's like, well, okay, we'll use this guy to just kind of fill in this gap there's no gaps to be filled in on this yeah. bonds case so oh no show being outside of the joy i feel like no reason why we can't give him the full nine rank demotion that his record otherwise deserves yep yeah whereas may say there's a lot of volatility there he mm-hmm. could he could end up in a pretty solid range but yeah no i'm uh i i'm excited to see where this is at i think it's pretty cool how much of the top is just basically Obvious, easy, no problem. Takiyasu's back in the Sanyaku, and uh, that makes me happy. Hey, absolutely. Uh, so, yeah, sorry once again for this one being a little late. Holidays and just busy schedule for us kind of got in the way, but we're still getting it out before the Bonds K drops on December 24th, America time, December 25th, uh, Japanese time. So it's going to be a Christmas Bonds K for our Hatsu Basho that starts on January 14th uh, before uh, the end of the year. Jake will be releasing his amateur sumo awards. We'll have this episode. We will have, uh, we should have our uh, Jake. We got to figure out when we're going to do the uh, Bonds K review because uh, that's going to be right smack dab in the middle of Christmas season. You know what we might have to do? We might have to do. Um... Oh, Solo no, never mind. An episode. <laughs> I Either that. Yeah, because I'm going to be traveling and seeing family all next week. So, yeah, that might be tough. It's either going to be solo or we just got to do that back to back with our professional sumo awards on New Year's Day or something. <laughs> yeah, that might be the case. But yeah, and then we're also going to have uh, maybe just after the new year, our GSB 2023 award show. That'll be coming out roughly, roughly New Year's because we're, re- we're recording it on New Year's Eve. Yeah. Um, yep. And just depends on if I feel like doing extra work after that. So if you enjoy this podcast, you can leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts or your favorite podcast listening service. If you enjoy this YouTube video, you can like, comment, and subscribe to the Grand Sumo Breakdown YouTube channel. Uh, you can find us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, search for Grand Sumo Breakdown. We have a blog, grandsumobreakdown.wordpress.com. Uh, if you have any comments, questions, or corrections, you can find us at any of those other locations, or you can send us an email at grandsumobreakdown at gmail.com, or you can leave us a voicemail at 805 805- 5613 It's 805-613-SUMO. Thank you for listening. And once again, if you don't hear any other episodes from us before the holidays, happy holidays, Merry Christmas, any other seasonal holiday you might be celebrating, Happy New Year and all that fun stuff. And God bless Bluey for giving us a few extra moments here. Thank you so much, Bluey. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for listening to Grand Sumo Breakdown. Until next time, throw your salt high and keep moving forward. <laughs>